is Nurse J at Nursing the Truth. Thank you for stopping by on this Friday afternoon. And in the Deep South right now, it's a little cold. Um, but that's good for us because I have been burning up this summer. So anyway, um, thank you so much for stopping by. This has been a uh, great day so far. So anyway, um, I am here to give you truth. I am here to set you free, my friends. I am here to let you decide what is real and what is not. Um, as we know, I have been out of the church for about three years or a little longer. And um, when I come to the realization that the book that we have is nothing more than rewrite of men, some truth but a lot of lies. And that's even why Thomas Jefferson wrote his own book. So anyway, this is for one of my subscribers that asked me a question yesterday. And, and Dear Truth Seeker, I thought I had read this before, but I wanted to bring it to you guys. One of my subscribers asked me yesterday, was Cesare Borgir related to Josephus, which is no other than Eris Calpurnus Piso, the man and the family that wrote the New Testament garbage. So, true seeker, yes, he was. This information that I am bringing to you is from Academia, A-C-A-D-E-M-I-A dot E-D-U or Academia dot E-D-U. It's called Pope Alexander the Sixth, Ancestors and Descendants. So, how do you like to know that every Pope is related? And came from the family member of Arius Calpurnus Piso. You see, if the church was in existence from the very beginning in Antioch, you remember in the Bible, right? The first Christians were at Antioch or Odessa or San Lorfa. Okay, you get it especially if you read Ralph Ellis' books, which I have. But anyway, if that was the case, wouldn't it go back like a long time ago? Why are you going to bring me some BS? So anyway, the Orthodoxy Roman Catholic thing was during the Flavian dynasty when Vespasian and Titus took over Rome. And a lot of writing was going on. Pilfering, changing things, adding things. And then when Papa Mac Daddy Josephus croaked you had plenty the younger and his sons taking over the script. And then it died. But guess what? It got picked back up by the family members down the line to keep going. So, let me ask you this. If this came from the Roman Empire under Arius Calpurnus Piso, pen name Josephus, Titus Flavius Josephus. And he was already kicked out by Nero. And was sent off in exile with all the rest of the Stoic philosophers. But then came back when Domitian was dead and served under Nerva. He had a lot of time on his hands, especially after 70, to write all 
the Jewish-Roman War and the Antiquities. But you see, even though Antiquities was a second-hand job, because he even says that in his Antiquities, that he's just writing what he had gotten. So if you think, friends, this is, he wrote this right off the bat himself. Yeah, he made up some stuff, I'm sure, but then he had some other stuff laying around. Anyway, may I digress? Hoping you're liking some of the information I'm giving you now. Oh, one other thing. In his Antiquities, he talks about this deluge, or deluge, however you want to say it. You know, the little ark with the little animals on it, the flood. But can't ever get a story straight in the Bible. It's either two by two or seven clean and seven unclean. Did it rain for 40 days and 40 nights or was it 150? So, you be the judge of that. Okay? So anyway, he takes and says that Barossus, he was going on Barossus' account of the flood. But wait. There are several different accounts of the flood. And he talks about Moses. And he says that, going back to the, the deluge, he says that he took and agreed with Barosis on the flood. But, sorry, not Moses. Scratch Moses out. He says that he agrees with Barosis on the account of the flood. And what happened? Oh, you're going to agree with Barosis, which was a Chaldean historian? But Barosis said that it was Unipishim, or I always get tongue twisted, Unipishim or Atrahasis that was the person in the ark. But wait, I thought it was Noah. So if you're a Jew and you're writing as a Jew and you're given Jewish history as being almighty, all breathed, all inspired, then why are you agreeing with Barosis over the deluge over the earth when Barosis said it was Unipishim or Atrahasis, not Noah? So... Thought I'd give you that tidbit. Research that, truth seekers. So anyway, Pope or not Pope? Aris Calpurnus Piso and his family started the wonderful Pope How Are Thou? And Pope Alexander was Cesare Borgia's father. Nasty little Pope. And, you know, there was a book uh, written by one of his scribes that he um, had been with him over his years. And he had kept a diary of this Pope's activities. And he didn't even know about it. And it was published. And the Roman Catholic Church did not want this book getting out because it is damning evidence of what they do behind closed doors. And Cesare was a very good looking guy. Um, a ladies man. Um, he was a cardinal and his brother um, was in the army, but Cesare wanted to be in the in the army um, as a soldier. 
<clears throat> but Borgia said, I have to have one son in the cloak and one son as a soldier. So he can control the world at that time. And which he did because he led the Spanish Inquisition. The Crusades, my friends. The Crusades he led in 1492. But as Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand were kicking him out of Spain, he saw that as a money thing. And he let them come to Rome. How interesting. So you get kicked out of Spain and you come to Rome. And they finance the Crusades. Against whom, friends? The Muslims? Okay, I'm digressing again. So anyway, Rodrigo Borgia, as Pope Alexander VI was born January the 1st, 1431, and died August 18th of 1502. Bye-bye. And... So he was a Spanish Pope, not a Italian Pope, Spanish, and they didn't like him because Italy did not like that there was a foreigner coming into Italy as a Pope. You can go rent the Borgia disc or get it on Netflix and watch the Borgia series. Now there are two Borgia series. The regular Borgias, and then there's another Borgias that showed that Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci had their hand in the creation of Jesus being Cesare Borgia. Digressing. So, his father had many different spellings of his name as well. The Pope's mother and father were both of royal descent and were cousins. So there we go, inbreeding again. So Borgia, father and mother, were cousins, which was common royalty at that time. And his mother was a sister of Pope Callistus, which was Alonso de Borgia. And Pope Alexander Borgia is known to be the ancestor of virtually all of the royal houses of Europe. Huh. Is he kin to Francis, I wonder? I'm sure of it, friends. This means that he is the common ancestor and his ancestors are likewise those of all the royal houses and dynasties of Europe beginning after his time. He was much like Arius Calpurnus Piso, his ancestor, from whom all the Roman emperors from Antonius Pius on were descended, as well as all of the popes up at least to modern times. Pope Alexander VI Borgia had at least two controversial portraits produced. One was of him kneeling before Madonna, the Virgin Mary, Isis. And the portrait of Mary was of the likeness of his mistress, Juliana Fornice. And whatever child is represented is no doubt one of his, being portrayed as the baby Jesus. You don't like what I'm telling you, friends? I really don't give a rat's behind. But it is truth. And truth is stranger than fiction. And you need to look this stuff up. And they are playing this like a fine-tooth fiddle. 
You need to get your mind straight, friends. In which in this portrait, he is acting like the father of baby Jesus. This is a satirical portrait. So this showed that he had a sense of humor. Another portrait was that of his son, Cesare Borgia. It is from the face of the Pope's son that our image of what the New Testament Jesus was supposed to look like and millions of people who have been praying to the images of Jesus from that time on have actually been praying to an image of this Pope's son. Of course, the Pope was descended from the very person who invented and played the part of the New Testament. By making this information public, we are exposing the fraud of Christianity for what it really is, a long-standing, deliberate fraud. It and other have managed to usurp the power of many governments of hundreds of years to allow it to continue to exist and thrive. In reality, this religion's leaders have been operating it as a legalized type of mafia. And it has been that way from the very beginning and when it was deliberately, deliberately created. Hopefully, as more people learn the truth, actions will be taken to do something about this harmful fabrication. It is time that those of us who know the truth start to inform and educate others. And that is what I do on my channel. I educate and I inform. I bring the information to you and it is up to you what you do with it. It is up to you what you want to decide. It is up to you whether you want to uncog your mind. And it is up to you to start putting your feet down on solid ground and search for the truth. This is how sick it is. I told you how to find the children and the years of Josephus. And you find them and he tells you and we know who he is, then you can put the mothers to these children. Josephus, he had many wives. And he had a son named Justus which was no other than Justin Martyr. And Justus married Rupilla. And then you had another son, Aeneas Vernus, AKA Julius Piso. He had Justus and Julian or Julianus that married Domitilla Lucilla. And then from there, they had Marcus Aurelius, the emperor, and it goes down all the way to, I'm getting there, friends, just hold on. This is sick. It looks like to me the Borgia name came in at around 1067. And then it started from there on. Roger Borgia, William Borgia, Pedro Peter Borgia, Garcia. It, it's sick. So ev ever since 1097. to after him and then even after him they had cousins so anyway friends 
I hope you have enjoyed this enlightening video. You may rent the Borgias, or you can watch it on Netflix. But I've watched that series, and it's very good because even, um, you see, the people of Hollywood that makes these videos, they know the history. And in the movie, the Pope is making fun of different holidays. And he says, oh, you don't you know that that's not really the holiday that comes from, you know, blah, 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 ISIS. And what is this? Blah, blah, blah. And he is liking the Apis Bull. I mean, guys, you have to watch it. You have to. And then the other one, you, there's even movie clips on YouTube. Just put in uh, Borgia uh, Images of Jesus, excuse me, the series. <coughs> excuse me, guys. Goodness, I'm sorry. Doggy here right next beside me. Anyway, um, just uh, look up some movie clips, and it shows Leonardo da Vinci, or you could put Leonardo da Vinci um, or um, Michelangelo sculpting uh, Cesare Borgia. And even in the movie clip, it shows him talking about making an image of himself. Now, there is a controversy about portraits of a Jesus painted before this time. So now we got to look what's the earliest paintings because even if that's so, the Borgias I just told you were from 1097 into this papacy line and married through it. So anyway, Hope you've enjoyed this video. I like to expose. Oh, yesterday. Let me tell you, and I'm going to let you go, friends. Last night when I was watching the news, it says that Pope Francis was wanting the technology places or Google or Facebook or whatever to start hammering down on, um, you know, child pornography on phones and iPads or whatever videos. It needs to be more selective with age-appropriate information, and there needs to be something done. But Pope Francis's guy just is just has been served with a prison sentence for child pornography. How? Precise and damning is that. So anyway, who tap in our shade? And we really know where everything comes from. Egypt, my friends. Who tap in our shade? And have a wonderful, wonderful day. Goodbye.